Today, I'll guide you through how to use and alter strings in Stata. So strings, as opposed to integers, bytes, floats, any of these information, is basically a combination of letters and or numbers. That is not a number and not a date variable. And today, I'll show you how to extract information from strings using three commands. The length of the string, int string, and substring, which allows you to copy or find specific parts in a string and replace them, replace part of a string, and use combinations of that string. So let's head over to our data set. For today's data set, I've prepared a set of information that contains the rent of a building. But it's given as an estimate, and it's given as a range. So we don't exactly know for sure. And we'd like to remove these errors from the data. We'd like to just get a number out of this. Now, using this, it's possible to adjust this in Excel, but that would take an immense, tremendous amount of time, which would not be preferable. So we're going to do this in Stata. And it also shows sometimes non-disclosed. So we don't know what the rent of this specific variable is. And as you can see, some of the numbers here are more than 10 or less than 10. And this differs a lot. And we need to correct for this when we clean out this information. So let me show you how to do that. Um, first, I'm going to use replace that rent variable and then replace it to empty if the rent variable is not disclosed. So what happens here is that I just replace the thing. And then what I get is that here where it was non-disclosed, it's now empty. So we've just dropped the observations that we basically don't need. We've re removed them with a nothing variable. And then we'd like to get this first value and the second value. And then we'd like to take the average of these two values. But we cannot just say, give me all the numbers or something. That doesn't work because we don't know whether a variable has the length of five items if it's more than 10 or four if it's less than 10. In this case, 22, two, dot, which makes a third, and 95 makes four and five. So we need to figure out which one is which. So we generate the first value, which is the substring of the rent 2,4 if the substring of the rent 6,1 is space. Now, what does this mean? This substring command does a couple of things. It basically cuts up part of your string and you can put anything in there. You could actually put a string into this command if you would like. So you would remove this and then you can put a string in there. You can also put a variable in there that is a string. And then it says, give me from the second position, the next and including that one, four items. So it basically tells you, if we go back to our file, drop the dollar sign and give me the first four values. And let's take a look at a case where there's only less than 10 in there. There was one at least. Yes. So 4.74 space dash. Now let's look at what the code does. Take from space to the subsequent four, if at number six, the only variable, it is a space. So if we do that and we go back to the value, we see that we hear 4.7. So it works. It got us to four, this first variable. But if we go further below, here it didn't work because the condition here is a space only at the seventh place, not at the sixth. There is a five there. So we need to replace that variable to basically do the same thing. And after we do so, we now get also that value. And then given the length of that one and the previous one, you can calculate basically everything else. So there we get our complete values and we can then destring them and replace them accordingly. So here we would just replace the things, destring them and then replace them.
and there we have our value times 12. So the average of that one times that one is the same as the yearly rents on the property. So this is one way how you could use some string calculations. Now this basically used the substring command and the length of the string command. There are also other things that you can do. And one that is really powerful is the instring command. You can do that using the sub and string command. You can basically remove or change part of a variable. So you would basically just generate a new variable, say that old variable name new equals the sub in string of the same variable and say that I now want to remove um, the open brackets and the EST part. And then I going to replace it with something new. And then I do this for every observation in the thing. So what you then get is you get a variable that looks like this. Whenever it's possible, I'm now replacing the previous variable with the new variable and replacing open EST with something new. So this would give you the following observation. I should to re replace part of strings. Now, if you don't like this something new, what you can also do is just say, replace that old variable is the same variable. And I want to replace this part here with nothing. And then you effectively remove this part from the string altogether. So if you have stuff that's like a limited behind a company name and you want to get rid of it or a NV for Dutch firms or whatever other part of the string that you don't like, you can easily remove it in this way. So it's a really powerful tool in order to change part of strings. You can also just remove any dollar sign from there. Now the command works as follows. You use the commands, you put in the string that you'd like to change, which can be a string or a variable. Then you select a piece of code that you'd like to change from the string to the thing that you'd like to change it to. And then the number of times that you want it to change. So at most once, twice, or a dot, it just changes everything that it finds that has that specific value. You can also just do this to replace stuff like spaces or something like that. So if you now replace the thing again, you've removed all of the spaces from the file. And you can put it to lower or uh, upper caps all at the same time using a similar tricks related to these strings. So thank you so much for listening. I hope this was insightful and you're now able to work with strings. So you can put a string, take out the parts you don't want to have, then de-string them, put them into an integer, and then subsequently use them to calculate. I hope this was useful and stay tuned for the next tutorial.